Okay, I, welcome back to uh, Studio uh, 42. I always forget to mention Watercolors. Watercolors uh, Studio 42. And um, so uh, what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be doing a painting of, uh, uh, of, uh, of one of my more popular things that I do. And uh, a lot of people have asked me if I'd uh, do another one. Uh, of birch trees. And what I usually do with the, uh, the birch trees, uh, I put some strips of just regular masking tape uh, on the paper, or onto the, I say not the paper, paper there, but I put it onto one of these pieces of uh, plexiglass. You can use regular glass too. And uh, then I just take a, a, a razor blade or one of those exacto knives and just cut the uh, tape so that uh, it uh, goes from a kind of a thick to thin, the way a tree would grow. Then I take the, uh, the strips off and place them onto uh, my paper, locating them. Um, sometimes I try to do an uneven number. Uh, overall, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, uh, pieces of tape for birch trees that I'm going to be doing today. But I don't want to do too many. You can put in as many birch trees as you so desire. But the problem is that uh, um, it takes a little extra time. All these little fussy things that you have to add it takes extra time. Now, as a general rule, uh, if I'm doing an outdoor painting, I always start at the top and work down. And while I'm thinking about doing that, I'm going to take uh, an object, let's say t take this uh, pen. I'm just going to put this underneath here because I, I, I like to have the board have a little bit of a tilt because we're dealing with water and of course water seeks its own level so it gravitates from top to bottom. That's why if you put the board up too vertically, you're going to have a lot of uh, water that settles to the bottom and the top part will dry faster. That's okay if you want it to dry f faster, but probably you wouldn't want to. So I'm going to start right in at the top. And uh, I usually wet the brush, just regular clean water <laughs> to begin with. And then um, I'm just going to put a, just wet the paper up around the top area where the sky is going to be located. Just wet the paper. Now the reason behind that is so that when I do drop the color in, it's not going to be streaky. You won't see sort of streaks of the brush on the paper so much. Uh, you'll just see sort of a, a little blend. Now I'm going to start off with a little bit of my ultramarine, and then I'm going. To, if I want, I can add a little dash of uh, the other blue that I have. I usually use uh, um, thalo, uh, thalo blue. But ultramarine and thalo will make a nice, nice color for the sky. Now the paper is wet, so automatically, when you put the color in, you see how soft it blends in. Okay. Now let's say, for example, um, I want to have some clouds in the sky, or I want to do something else with it. Well, very easily, I take a piece of my uh, paper towel, this regular paper towel. Uh, it's hard to get <laughs> any towels lately in the grocery stores and so forth. But you see how you can blot with a towel? Uh, you can do that across if you want to get the effect of clouds. Another thing too, sometimes you like to show where the sun is rising or setting. So if that's the case, I'm just going to have this uh, picture here today. Let's start from the right side. Usually I have this sun, sunrise. So I take a little bit of yellow. Whoops, need more than that. We got, we're going to drop that over here. Okay, that's how that works. And I usually go about one third across. I don't want to stop smack in the middle uh, uh, with uh, a warm sky and then a cool side. So that isn't the way Mother Nature works sometimes. So now, if the um, obviously if the blue is still um, a little bit damp, it's going to blend. And of course, the yellow and blue turns a little bit green. So I'm just going to just put a dash of uh, just a little bit of this uh, 
quinacridone rose, which is alizarin crimson. I'm just going to put some of that in there. That's going to soften in, and uh, we're not. Now the thing with watercolor, uh, I probably mentioned it a lot of times before. Uh, with watercolor, when it dries, it dries uh, much lighter. So you look at it in the morning, you know, tomorrow morning, when it's really dried out, and, and the uh, all the colors are, uh, are going to be lighter. So having said that, we can kind of see see how I can pull that out. Just pull that right out. And you can pull some of that sky across over in the here too. There you go. Now if I want to make it a little bit brighter, let's say in one corner or whatnot, I just add more more paint onto the brush and less water. You know, something like that. Um, <clears throat> are you, I'm usually not too fussy with the sky because um, Usually by the time you get done, the trees and sometimes if they have leaves on them, uh, they'll hide a lot of the blue sky. So I'm not too fussy about that. Now we've had such a hot spell, especially the month of July. Um, I thought today I'm going to try to cool things off a little bit and this is going to be, uh, I'll make this into a winter time picture. I brought a, a little picture, not of this particular subject but just uh, to use it as a reference for local color you know what you might want to add to uh, my picture now of course with uh, cameras when you take pictures they're picking up uh, a lot more color than normal now having said this doing the uh, sky uh, also I'm going to have a little stream and this is a winter picture so there's, there's going to be some open areas Let's put a little dash of that blue in here. And I, I've got a little kind of a bridge, a little stone bridge or bridge you can put in there. And uh, I'm gonna bring some of this color down into here. And uh, some of the areas might be a real deeper blue. Uh, I'm gonna leave some white in there in spots because sometimes you get a little bit of a snow, snow that collects on some of the stones that uh, are protruding from the water. Uh, here we go, come across through here. Um, I'm gonna to try to follow a little bit of my pencil drawing. <laughs> it's a quick sketch here, just, just to get the shape of it. And uh, we come down through here again you can leave some white spots in here for some snow that might be on the protruding rocks. Here you go, something like that. Now if you want to go a little darker here, there, and whatnot, you can. One thing about watercolor, you can always go darker a lot easier than you can to try to lighten it up sometimes. Blue is a stainer, so you, it's hard to get it out, but that's okay. Let's leave some more white in there. Now, if I don't want, want the white in there, I, I can always erase that or pull some of it out. Okay, let's, let's clean this up a little bit, straighten that. Water seeks its own level, so it kind of flattens out. And across through here. Just make that line a little straighter here. Water's hard for water to run uphill, but it sure can run downhill. There we go. Let's get that a little straighter there. Yeah, that's better. Pull that out. Now, I can always touch this up as we go along. Now, yeah, let's see what else. By the way, while I'm letting the sky dry, what I'm doing here is uh, I usually work on the lower portion and uh, then come back and do the middle as a rule. And that's just to let the, um, the paper dry out a little, especially if you're going to have mountains like in the background. If you paint wet into wet, what happens a lot of times is that um, 
the uh, wet and the wet um, blurs quite a bit so you don't get that nice clean cut line that you're looking for so it's a matter of managing the water um, how uh, how much time you give certain areas to dry and you're managing a little bit of the, how dark you or how much paint you want to put on the paper as opposed to water um, the water will can vary a little bit if it's ice sometimes you can pull uh, some lines through it but this is sort of like a, a little open stream I may come in a little bit later and it, <coughs> excuse me add a little bit more dark to it a little bridge here I might put some shadow underneath that as we go along Okay, I don't want to spend an awful lot of time because I want to be able to finish this today. A lot of times when I do a painting with uh, birch trees, I never get around to doing the branches and some of the texture, you know, you'd find on the bark of the birch trees. So here we go. Uh, just pull that out a little bit. I can always touch it up. Some of the edges. But what I want to do you just put some shadow on this is going to be the land it's going to have some snow up in there so it isn't always going to be white white everywhere so i'm just going to put some soft blue in there um and over on this side now when you put the blue in you want to, if you want to make it look like it's sloping down you can just put the uh, when you do the brushwork you can just show Shape, shape of the contour of the land on the snow and then there'll be some other shadows that we'll put in a little bit later but now we're just putting in uh, almost like a soft wash and I just wet this up through here and uh, just dash some a little bit of pale blue through there so we, the paper itself isn't like white, white. Yeah, something like that. Now, when, you, when you're painting a lot of times, when you're doing something like this, it never really looks like it's gonna come out halfway decent. And, but nothing it usually ever does if it's half cooked or whatever. Uh, it, it never looks good until it's finished. So same idea and now if I'm going to have uh, uh, like some sunlight or sunset if you will whatever you want it to be you can also kind of reflect some of that little bit of yellow onto the snow like a background but make it nice and soft just put a little dash in here or there and that just adds a little bit of uh, texture to your picture. Sometimes if I get too carried away, sometimes I have to come back with white paint and uh, um, cover up some of the gr uh, ground color, make it look more like snow. Sometimes you can catch it and blot it out before it gets too carried away with the yellow. Okay, now, um, what we want to do now is come back. I don't think the sky is quite dry enough yet, so I'm going to have to let that go a little bit. And uh, we'll see if we can do some of the other, some, uh, some other things to the, uh, the trees here. Um, what we want to do is make sure that there's, there's some color here because when I pull the tape off, if the, the background is white, I lose the shape of the tree. It's, it, white goes into the white. Let's just put a little bit of soft, warmer color here. Just dash some of that. I see some of that in this painting up here. Uh, I saw it, it's called a painting, it's a, it's a photograph. Let's put a little bit of that in here. And, um, reflect some of that color over here a 
like I said, I don't want to make it too much color because then I lose the uh, I lose the effect of the white snow. Just a little bit across over here. You can have that kind of go into the sky too. Now that it's starting to dry a little bit more, you can take a little bit of that red and introduce that up in there. You know, when you're doing this, sometimes people say, what in the world is it? You're throwing paint at the paper here. And then, uh, come down through here. I figure with all this hot spell, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> with all this hot weather we've had, uh, doing uh, winter scenes is sort of psychologically cool cooling, I guess. Um, hopefully it will be. And then you say, well, you're using a, uh, warmer colors too, but uh, you can get away with that. Especially in a painting sometimes. I've had people do a, uh, a winter scene just using just uh, pink and, and red. Uh, and see how you kind of distribute that color. But what I want to make sure is that I make sure I've got some paint around those birch trees. On either side so that when I pull the tape off, like I said, you don't lose the shape of the tree. You know what I'm what I'm talking about once you pull the tape off. Okay, just mixing a little bit here. Wiggle the brush around, softening the edges. Whoops, <laughs> a little bit too much there. Yeah, take that out. Now, let's see what we can do down here, right next to the water. I didn't want to get too close. I didn't want to get into the blue too much. We'll kind of clean those edges up as we go along. Okay, so much for the background um, color. I say background, actually, it's sort of the base color. I do that with most all the paintings that, that I do. Uh, if it's a, um, let's say if it's a field of grass that's green, I always put a sort of a base color yellow and then put the green into that and it just makes the uh, grass look like it's uh, more vibrant than just uh, putting solid green on there without any use of yellow. Especially with watercolor. It seems to work better if you do that. Okay, you can see what I'm doing here. And now it all looks kind of nothing. Nothing is defined, it's all blurry, out of focus, uh, what we've done. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully when I pull the tape off, you'll see, ah, there's the trees jumping out. Hopefully, huh? There you go. Well, you know, you, you, you have to do uh, quite a few uh, paintings o over a period of time. And so what, what you have to do is realize that not all of them are going to be, the, um, you know, real winners. Uh, sometimes, uh, I know myself personally, I'll have a painting that will come out really super and with the least amount of effort and then sometimes when you try too hard to be perfect it doesn't always work for some reason i don't know why maybe because you must tighten up somewhere about it and um, but some of my best paintings have been things that i've just kind of painted kind of loose 
I, I would say maybe a little bit reckless, you know, not too tight. Just just uh, drop the paint on the paper and let it, let it, let it go. I think um, I, I often tell everybody, uh, my students, that um, uh, sometimes you paint better uh, on a piece of pa paper that you're using to test the color because you're dabbling, you know, you're not worrying about w what the image is going to be. But then but when you p go to the paper, all of a sudden you tighten up about it. You get too fussy. Okay, I'm waiting for this to dry up in here. All right. Now, what we want to do is, uh, let's see if we can come down here. And I want to put that, uh, I want to put some uh, um, darker color across here because I, I want to show the mountain range. And I think I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue, put a little bit of Payne's gray in it. That makes it, or sepia, doesn't matter, one or the other. Sepia is a little bit more brown. Payne's gray is a little darker. I don't want it to be too dark, but I'm going to come across here and see if I can put that mountain range back in. I almost I almost hit it with the uh, with the, uh, the paint. I can hardly see my pencil mark. I put the mountains in. Now you see you've got a double sort of a double edge but it is running down but what I have to do is make sure I, I pull it before it can settle in too much. See? So you don't want that, uh, that to have a real uh, too much of a sharp edge. Okay, so we want the lights over here, so you probably want to make the left side a little darker and pull that back down. Now, right now, I think that's got to be pulled out a little bit more because I think it's a little bit too blue to uh, represent some snow up there. Too much color there. So let's see if I can take some of that out. I use the brush first, and then I, if I have to, I'm going to take a, a dry towel here. And while it's ooh, while it's still wet, I'm going to blot it. You know, get some of that color back out. Uh, here's where the fun starts, where you try to. Keep that sh still have a sharp edge to it. This yes, looks pretty good. See what I'm doing? I'm trying to soften that down a bit. I don't, I don't want it to be too much blue. If it's supposed to be the White Mountains or the Green Mountains, I think we want to get it more white if it's supposed to have snow up there. Not so much blue. Take some of that out. Now the paint will settle in and it dries very fast, uh, especially when you're outside. If you're outside painting, let's say like the, the way the weather's been hot lately, that paper's going to dry so fast. So what we try to do is paint underneath something in the shade and looking out into the light like I have an umbrella that I put over the chair that I am working from and uh, so that you don't have that sunlight beating on the paper and uh, drying it too fast here we go take some of that out that's going downhill so I'm going to See if I can push this back up. Whoops. Need more paint. Let's push the hill back up in there more. Yeah, over in there. All right, now, we got, that looks pretty good. 
Um, now I got to do this middle area and we take some of that edge off here hold that down now in through this area here you could have some a little bit more indication of some green now maybe I should move to a, um, a smaller brush but I'm just going to just dabble a little bit kind of put some green in there out of focus and um, keep it lighter for now right across in there and push it now that's wet into wet so that's gonna do something settle in now as we come down you want to show some of the darker shadow on the ground the contour the ground doesn't have to be flat level you can have a kind of bumpy but uh, you can bring that in I'm being extra cautious I'm making it very light I can them in darker I want to go up and uh, yeah more up into here too see if this was summertime you, you wouldn't worry because you're gonna have a lot of leaves on the trees in the foreground but if it's a winter scene in the birch tree, it just, the little branch is going to be sort of empty. So you see more of the background uh, through the tree. Now let's get a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more green into here, right down in this area. See how I just dabble around really and after a while you get kind of used to you know what what texture you're looking for and something like that this could be a little meadow across the in in here in this open space if you want to flatten it out you can or you can come in a little bit darker around the base of everything uh, trees plants and whatnot there's always a little bit of a deeper kind of a little deeper shadow in there whoops kind of push and pull break it up always something in there to break it up yeah, here we go Okay. Now I, I'm not worrying about painting on the tape because we're going to pull the tape off anyways. That's why the tape is good to be there. Okay, let's see if I can pull some of this out and I'll just take some of the bottom edge away. Blend it out. Something like that. Now a lot of times uh, when I do paintings, um, if I don't have time to finish, somebody said maybe I should have a painting uh, of one that I've finished and have that available so that you can see what it looks like when it's done. But at least you're seeing the process of how I go about starting out these base colors and then build up off of the base colors and um, where you want the edges to be a little bit sharper you have to make sure the paper is dry uh, what i'm doing now if i'm dabbling like this this is actually painting wet into wet because the paint is wet and so it's going to uh, just uh, kind of mix on the paper sometimes it works pretty good sometimes it doesn't okay now let's do a little bit more of the foreground I certainly can go a little bit darker in here. Let's put some of that in. In places. Now I have to be careful because remember I said that's still supposed to be white snow. So I can't get too, too, um, too much color. Or I have to change the season back to maybe fall or spring or summer. Okay. We could do that easy enough. 
I always tell people when you're mixing colors that if you're mixing two colors together, always pick, uh, use the light color first and mix a little bit of the darker shade in, into that if you want to keep it lighter. But a lot of times, if, uh, if you do it the other way around, if you put the dark color and try to make the dark color lighter, you're wasting a lot of the light color to, to get it lighter. So you, you want to keep that in mind. You're always safer to start with a light color and then go uh, from there. Okay. Uh, if this needs a little bit more white in there, I can always lift it out. Take some of that out. Okay, here we go. Pick up some of my water spatter here. All right, now, um, let's see what else. Eventually, I'm going to put some darker shadows, cast lights coming this way. The shadow's going to be on the left side of the trees. You'll see what, after I pull the tape off, you'll see what I have to do. Okay. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Okay, now, uh, sometimes I hide a lot of that w with a brush, uh, uh, putting in like brushes, bushes, and all that sort of thing. I'm just trying to soften some of that out. Now, we can always go All right, now, what I usually do too is paint around the base of the tree. I, I put a little bit more of a darker shadow in there, and I might as well be doing that uh, eventually when I pull the tape off. If I'm doing it now, I pull the tape off, I, I won't have the uh, shadows on. That's what we gotta do. Let's put some of the darker shadows in the corner. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, um, I don't know if I'm ready to pull the tape yet. <clears throat> While I'm waiting for that to let the tape dry, uh, paint dry around the tape, and touch up some of the water here. Yeah, and I'm gonna have some of that near the uh, near the edge. We're gonna make that a little dark shadow there. So it shows up a little bit more. Okay. Or something like that. You can give it some extra little coats of paint as you go along. Alrighty, now I don't know if I'm going to leave, leave that ice flow in there or not. There we are. Oh, there we go. Now let's see if we can pull the tape in a few seconds here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky sometimes. Now, instead of tearing this tape straight down, what I do is tear it on a, like a 45 degree angle, like this. Yeah. Lift that right off of there. Now, I guess it'd be better to go this way. Oops, there you go. I don't want to damage the uh, surface of the watercolor paper if I can help it. Okay. This is still a little bit wet here. 
I guess we can doctor it up a little bit. It won't be too noticeable. Now, sometimes the paint does get underneath there, but that's all right because that can be part of the texture of the birch bark on the tree. Yeah. Okay, got a couple more. See how they jump right out? Let's see if I can get this off here. Now where that's light, it, see how it doesn't show up as as much, but we can touch that up. That's a good place to put some of the uh, texture of the bark to contrast. What I've done tonight, I've got that um, the tape off sooner than I uh, normally would. So I'll have time to work on the, um, the tree. Now, I'm going to skip to, um, I'm going to be using a smaller brush here. That one I was using was a, what, uh, pretty good size. Probably a 12. Okay, this is a little bit smaller. All right, now, the light, I, most of the shadows I'm going to have coming from the, um, the, the right to left. So what I'm going to do here, get some water on the brush, and I'm going to mix a little bit of that uh, sepia again with my... Uh, ultramarine and we're just going to do some work on the shadow side now sometimes it's easier for me to turn the board around maybe and just come down this way right down the side of the tree like that now see how that's a hard edge on the inside so what I do is just pull that out. Just pull that out, lighten it up. Now if the outer edge is a little bit bumpy, that's okay. Because I don't I don't want it to uh look too much like the um uh, it's too perfect. A little shadow around the base of the tree. Now let's come over here, do this one. I'm moving right along because, like I said, sometimes when I do the birch trees, I never have time to finish. So that's why I'm getting right to it. Shadow at the top. And then come down the left side. Soften it on the inside, like half on, half off with the brush. Come right down the side like this. There you go. Okay. Moving right along here. This is a larger tree here. This tree is really in the foreground because it's, you can't see the base of the tree. We'll make that a little darker. And take some of that hard edge off on the inside. See, a tree is like a cylinder shape. You take some of that out of it and pull it back. Okay. Now let's come over here. Again, we're coming up. Pull right up on the shadow side. Now, what's going to happen here, the tree is a little bit towards the... Uh, um, lightness so sometimes you might see a shadow on the whole side of the tree the whole thing might be in the shadow but if it is you still you still need a little contrast between the tree and the, the background I just fancy this up a little bit here okay this one got real dark so I, 
in order to sometimes make that like as if I intended it to be that way. I just make one of the others a little darker. Whoa, <laughs> not that dark. Yeah, might be all right. Let's see what we can do here. We'll pull some of that color. You see how that the light changes around the tree. I'll pull that up into here. That could go right off the page of paper. I didn't make that long enough. Now this gets a little smudgy here, so I have to be pick up some of that extra water. Yeah. A little bit smudgy. Take some of that out of there. And we'll do this one over here. Now you see how I got that's a little bit more blue into that, so what I do is put some more color into this one. That can go a little darker too. Okay, take some of that out. Yeah. Now, um, I don't want to leave this one too long to let it dry. Let's put some shadow on that one. There you go. Okay. Oh, there goes the water. That's all right. <laughs> Got another one. This is pretty well just water, so it won't. I hope it don't stain too much. <laughs> oh, have to throw in the towel. There we go. Good thing it's blue, blue to blue. But it's mostly water, so it's not going to leave too much of a stain. Yeah, let's pick it up for now. Okay, now, see what I can do, finish this off. I don't want to let these things set too long. Uh, now, what I might need is more contrast. So, uh, uh, what I'm going to do um, in here, I think I'm going to have to go a little bit darker into this background just to give it a little bit more contrast. And, but when you do that, you have to pull it back away from the tree. You can't just leave a, a line and see how you kind of blend it out. And uh, it, see, this one needs more contrast in there. So you just drop a little bit more color into it. Yeah, there we go. All right, over here, got, got a little bit blurry. Let's see if I can doctor that up. I want to give that a little bit more contrast, make the background a little darker. Yeah, pull it back down. Something like that. Almost lose the contrast there. Can doctor that up a little bit more. One thing about watercolor, you can kind of keep, keep wetting it and lifting some of the color out. See how that takes some of that color back out? But when you do that, I'm going to move that cup. I already knocked it over once. I don't want to do it again. Okay. Again, you have to kind of darken this in, in the background. Okay, that, now this one shows up real dark. Tomorrow morning it won't, 
it won't be that noticeable. Um, now, this is what you call being very relaxed with the texture. Um, let's say if I wanted to put another something in there, like another tree, I could do that. See how you can paint a tree on either side. See how you can make it look like a tree, another tree over here. But you have to paint both sides to make it show up lighter. Sometimes I use uh, saran wrap and crinkle it up and lay it on the wet paint. And for some reason, the air gets underneath there and pushes out. So you get all this extra little texture of other trees in the paintings, see that? In the background. When I keep doing this, it gives it sort of a dry brush effect. Gives it that texture. I mean, we're dealing with trees that have a relatively uh, a rough bark texture. See, if this doesn't show up, see what I do? I add a little color into that. That's sort of a dry brush effect. Not much paint or water on the brush. And uh, I'm going to pull this out. Just be very careful. You don't mess up the edge of the tree too much. Yeah. And this needs more something in there. Let's put some more trees in there. Here you go. Like I said, if you don't have to be as fussy, sometimes it's better if you work more spontaneously than trying to make everything look too perfect. Take some of that, blend that out. Okay. All right, now, what else do we need? I want to make sure these trees have some, something around the base too. Give them a little bit more shadow around the bottom part. Give everybody the same amount of attention, I guess. This gets a little bit too much. I just soften it out. Yeah. Now, the, the thing is, this is this is drying. And watch, if that's dry, I watch what happens when I do this. See how you get another tree in there? Look at this. You can make that four trees pretty soon. This might be dry enough. So I come down, I can almost see another tree here. Here you go, like that. You just, you just have to make sure I kind of clean up the base here. All right. Now, um, let's get some of this in here. Now, a lot of times what I can do, sometimes I take a piece of plastic, and what you do is uh, you take the plastic and you do this. Just put the edges of plastic in there and you score it. And so when I go over that with some color, you can see what happens is that color settles in and it comes out darker. So you show some of the texture on the bark of the tree. Now that's called scoring. Another thing you can do with the plastic, you can take and push and plow it around. If the paint is wet enough, you can kind of sometimes make texture in it. Now, if the paint isn't uh, wet enough, you have to add some water to it. Then take the piece of plastic, you can take a smaller piece than this one, or one that has a rounded edge, and wash what I do into this wet area. See how you can cut into that? Now when I go back over that, this paint's gonna settle into that mark, see it? And it's gonna look like some more texture of another tree in there. 
take some of that out of there. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't think I want to leave that in there. It uh, might be too, show up too noticeably, like somebody tried to cut the tree down. Let's see if that out of there. Stop. Oh, there you go. Get that out of there. Yeah, t touch it up. There you go. Now, um, you see what we have here? I've lost a little bit of contrast on that side of the tree. So what we have to do is just be very careful, go up against that edge. You just touch it up. You can make another tree show up, kind of in, ba in back there. Could add a little bit more a darker color there. See how you can make another tree show up in there? It looks like something. All right. Now this is um, this is getting a little bit tricky, but not bad. Um, this is I've been working primarily kind of lighter, uh, just to be on the safe side. Uh, I always paint light first because I can always it's easier to go dark you know, there's no problem about going dark with, uh, with a darker color but sometimes after this dries you can't you have to scrub it like crazy to, to reactivate the color if you want to make it lighter see how I'm just pulling that out soften some of that out now what I'm going to do um, if, if this gets a little darker uh, I'm going to uh, be putting some more little patches of uh, the birch in there. But in the meantime, what I usually never get to is I never get to uh, do some branches on the uh, tree. Uh, so let's, let's work on that. I've got a, one of these little fine um, brushes here. Watch this. Whoops, need more paint on the brush. They call these a rigor or design brush. Now what I do is I start thick, right? Press down, and I want that branch to go thin. So as I, as I go out, I lift up and make the line thinner. Here's a branch on the tree. Let's do some more. Maybe something else coming out of here. Here you go. Now, see how that pops everything out? Uh, let's do some more of these. A any place you want to break up. Well, I, gotta, I want to make that a little darker. It's a little bit too thin. Press down, lift up. Have a little twig going off here. Maybe something in there. Something off in back of this one. Yeah, you can add a lot of branches in here. Uh, let's see, we need something over here in back of this one. Maybe it goes off there. This needs something very fine. It goes in back there. Something goes off here. Okay. So you can you can keep adding limbs and branches quite a for quite a while here. Uh, it's something over here. Something break it up in here. Go right off the page if you want, or off the paper. Now, while I still have this little rigor, I can also start putting some of these markings. Oops! <laughs> Never get enough paint or water on the brush here. Now you can start putting some of this texture, you know, the bark of the tree. And that's what really pops things out a, a, a quite a bit more. Up until now, we've been just been kind of soft with everything. Let's put another branch in there. I don't like that one. Too thick. Take it back out. And just put a little patch of texture in there. You don't want to make the texture uh, too um, even 
because you don't want to make it look like a ruler or, or, or steps. So some of these, some of the markings are close together. Just pull in from the edge, either side. See how you can put some of those markings on the tree? And that's what really pops the painting out. Just the trees in the foreground, all that other little, what I put in between is kind of out of focus. But you want the ones that are closest to you, you want to give them a little bit more uh, texture and detail. Left side, right side, right up to, you can put some, uh, some of the uh, bark peeling off the tree. So there's a lot you can do with it. Yeah. Now, as you go along, there'll be other things where uh, you'll find that uh, you'll want to touch up or add um, if, uh, add more branches as you go along. Let's just put some more markings on this one. This needs some attention here. Yeah. Now, if that shows up too much, I just hit it. Paper towel. This thing needs more contrast. So this is a good place to put a mark on the tree. Right, right in there. Okay. Now, you have to kind of look at this thing and decide what you want to do with it. And um, see what... What we, what we got here? I'm having fun. I don't know if you folks at home are having fun, but <laughs> um, but it, it's funny how uh, watercolor does work. Like I said, sometimes even if you goof up and make <laughs> make make fill fill the paint, you. Maybe maybe it helps the painting, I don't know. I've had that happen before. Oops. Oh. Something in there. Okay, folks, um, this is it for now. Um, but uh, I can pull the tape off here and uh, brush it up and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>